All right. And we're back with another riveting, thought provoking episode of the podcast. Larry, how you doing? Are you are you hunkered down? Are you hiding for your life? Are you living been, in fear? Been online trying to order Clorox wipes and masks and gloves and <laughs> no, I'm fine. Well, I'm fine. I, I tell you what though, there's we've we've created about three new jobs at every Walmart though. I went to Walmart yesterday to go to groceries, and now they have Walmart cops in there making sure you go one way down an aisle. They got blue, they got blue tape on the floor. And you can only go down each aisle one direction. You can't pass each other an aisle. And so now they got people posted at the end of each aisle, making sure that you don't go the wrong way on a one-way aisle. So wow. now there's now you got now Walmart have police officers in there. Walmart police. They have yellow uh, vests. They don't have badges. But anyway, I'm glad that the economy is 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 booming at Walmart. So yeah, one I, more, uh... one more job besides that useless useless toothless greeter that come that you see when you go in that says welcome to walmart now we've got walmart i'm gonna call them ushers because police officers are too fancy of a word they're ushers yeah walmart well i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna do a little uh producing right now i need you to adjust your camera that way a little bit so that you're in there you go because i think when it splits the screen i don't want it to cut off half your face because we know everybody wants to see your face absolutely well we went yesterday to go get some groceries for my parents and take them some chick-fil-a and my my kids have been in the house for a couple weeks and i said chick-fil-a and my son rose up out of the bed like lazarus from the grave and uh so we we get on the interstate and I, I get a text from a friend of mine who sends me a all it is is a picture of this of this makeshift tunnel and she's at Home Depot and I just happen to be driving by the Home Depot and I look over there and I see all I see the herd of cattle lined up under the the little tents and they you know only let so many people in at one time so we went on down to to mom and dad's and sat in the yard and kept our distance you know and obviously i mean my parents are 78 and 80 and my mom's got a lot of health problems so we're obviously being uh, cautious you know but um this is this is becoming such an interesting time for for trucking because so much of my life has not changed and it just creates this weird feeling that I have because I'm looking out the same windshield. I'm looking at the same gauges and the same steering wheel. And for the most part, I'm going to the same customers. And so it's, it's so strange for me just as an individual, because I have these moments where I'm like, I, I remember the shutdown's going on. I remember, I see the signs, stay home, save lives. Uh, you know, don't, don't travel or limit travel. And I, it's strange because I know that so many other people's lives have been turned upside down and mine's largely so far unchanged. And it creates it creates a difficulty where I, I, I gave my sons a haircut without a license in my house, by the way. Um, but, uh, we called a, a, a family member and got her on FaceTime cause we needed a little assistance from a professional. And this is not a member of the family that we have regular conversations with. I mean, we, we see each other at family gatherings and that kind of stuff. And kind of one of those deals where you pick up right where you left off. You just don't talk to them every week. And, and we sat there on FaceTime probably with an hour of, with her for probably an hour or more, just, just chatting about things that are happening. And she's not left a house in three weeks. So the only thing that she sees is either what's right directly in front of her or what she sees on the television. And when I told her, I'm like, well, look, I've been in 10 states since March 16th when the 15 day 
uh, order from El Presidente was laid down. You civil disobedient person. You. Yeah, I know. I'm going to hell in a handbasket. Um, and I'm telling you, I'm seeing with my own eyes at least 75%, maybe 80% of people are still doing what they're doing. And so I have this difficult recollection, not recollection. That's not, no. I have a hard time reconciling the idea that we are all supposed to be locked in our homes to, to slow the spread, to flatten the curve. Well, in order, it seems to me, at least, logically speaking, which I know logic's not allowed in, in times like these, but if that's going to work and, and have the desired effect, then the rest of the country's got to look like New York City supposedly does right now with nobody in it, you know? And so... um. I don't remember. I don't think I talked about this on the last episode because uh, I went to Texas instead of doing my dedicated run. And I was at the TA in Dallas. And I got up on Friday morning and I went into the Burger King. I got me some breakfast. And standing in line and breakfast at, at there, I thought, oh, well, there's nowhere to sit down. I'm not allowed to sit down. All the chairs are roped off. And it was raining, so I couldn't sit at the outdoor picnic table. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm about to get a shower. I'll just go sit down and eat in the shower, you know. But there was a 38-minute wait for showers. Mm. So in the middle of a pandemic, I sat in the floor in the hallway of a truck stop mm. and ate my breakfast. I should be dead by now. Should be. If, I was going to say, before the virus, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> right. You know, I've I've touched every door handle in ten states. I've I've gotten fuel. I've I haven't worn a mask. I'm not in a bubble. I mean, I wash my hands like I should. You know, um, it's just such a strange experience, and I see uh, other trucks moving. You know, and, and I see lots of flatbeds and um what you call those big fat tankers, the, the air, um, they're like air, um, dry bulk, dry bulk tankers. I, I just see lots of different kinds of trucks. I see lots of equipment being hauled. Um, and it's left me with this question. We talked in the, in the episode about essential business and, the only supposedly the only businesses that are permitted right now that are allowed to operate are what we are told is essential. Now, by the definition of the people on my Facebook feed, my windows and doors, I, a matter of fact, I've been told by one guy that uh, I need, I need to be held responsible for all the people that are going to die because I'm hauling windows and doors right now when those are not essential to him. Right. <clears throat> but it, so it, it raises this interesting question. Okay. If the economy, if this, let's say this goes on another 30 days right now, it's Mar it's April 5th. Let's say this goes to May 1st, and we've got all these people working at home. We've got uh, all these restrictions, and let's say that the economy doesn't completely collapse. There's got to be the question asked of how much of the economy is based on contractors, truck drivers, Because there's a lot of activity going on right now, and, and you probably don't know that if you're watching the news. But there is a lot of con – and if you think about right now, if I wanted a home project done, I could find somebody to come and do it. Oh, wow. Well, just, just had one. I've had contractors right? here all week. So. <laughs> right. Because, I mean, you can tell the contractor – that he has to shut down and stay home. And you can tell me the homeowner that I have to stay home and shut down, but 
without literally putting a gun to my head or putting me in handcuffs, you really can't stop me. I mean, you can tell me, but that that's about all you can do. And so as I went around my customers this week and I, I made a point to have conversations with people that I never would have normally had conversations with, I said, what, what, what's happening? What do you see? And they're like, well, we've had a couple of customers that don't want us coming around, but everything else is pretty much going. And so I'd say, are y'all going to be open next week? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as they keep ordering, we're going to keep. And said, okay, well, y'all keep ordering. I'm going to keep coming. But trucking... Aside from this emergency, this crisis, we knew trucking was important because of the nature of what we do. We know we've been in the warehouses. We've been on the production floors. As drivers, it's really easy to forget once you cross the bridge into driving a truck it's kind of hard to remember what it was like before that before you were exposed to the things that you get exposed to by driving a truck i mean my mom and dad have not left a a probably 300 mile radius of their house in 30 years there's so many people that will never see the Rocky Mountains. They'll never see Arizona, New Mexico. They'll never see the Pacific North, Northwest, the West Coast, the California sky. They'll never see that stuff. New York City. But yet we have, and it changes our perspective. It makes the world a lot smaller place when you've driven from New York to California. And so we knew how important uh, the trucking industry and transportation was. And, and now a lot of people are finding out the hard way um, how important it is. But we're also going to find out in this time of who's really at the center. Because I'm not stopping. I mean, the only way I stop is if the customers say, all right, well, you know, we either have nothing to order or we just literally can no longer stay open. We're out of business. That's the only way I'm stopping. But I'm seeing a lot of people enjoying rooting for the destruction and they don't even really have to be political operatives it seems like i've got this one guy who who, with it's almost with glee he shares the death toll in the number of cases it's like he's happy about it for some reason and obviously there's probably some section of people that just hates their jobs so bad that given an excuse to stay home and collect unemployment they're like hell yeah send me a check The reason I'm going down this rabbit hole right now is is this article from Transportation Nation. Headline, OIDA warns President Trump many truckers could soon go home amid pandemic. So Todd uh, Spencer, um, the president CEO, urged President Trump to take immediate action to safeguard America's supply chain and most importantly, the health and safety of the nation's truck drivers. I hate to term immediate action because that is so vague. You know, what exactly, Mr. Spencer, is it you want the president to do? He says, quote, every day they are exposed to COVID-19 because of the critical service they provide for all of us. They run in and out of the hot zones, and without question, they are exposed. Without question, you say, Mr. Spencer, because slaves are not allowed to ask questions. He says access to testing must be available where they are, particularly on busy truck routes, and testing must show results in hours, not days. So far, testing has not been available, made, uh, made available at truck stops. Along with that, we need a strategy, strategy, strategy for treatment or quarantine that could take place at nearby motels, Spencer urged. He warned if a plan is not in place to put to protect truckers, the supply chain could greatly suffer. 
Once word spread that drivers are testing positive, we could very well see a tremendous reduction in drivers willing to risk everything for the rest of us. I have zero concern about contracting this virus. Zero. None. I'm terrified of people like Todd Spencer that wants to kidnap me, take me out of my truck, and lock me in a hotel somewhere away from my family. Mr. Spencer, hear me clearly. That's kidnapping, and that's slavery. You don't have that right. So, Oida, Todd Spencer, I don't need your help, okay? I, 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 I do not need your help. I don't want your help. We're, we're on such a precipice right now that unfortunately is going to prove the blue ribbon model what's the word I'm looking for? Not uh, accurate. It's going to prove this model of low cost operation of no debt of an older paid for truck that is easily um, maintained so I don't, I don't want to say that this benefits us, but it does in a way. We, we can say, well, you know, if you've got a $4,000 a month truck payment and something like this hits, you're screwed. If you're running a company on a, on a shoestring because you've got so much massive debt, you're putting your employees at risk by running a company on a 3% margin. And then when all hell breaks loose, everybody's out of work. I don't like that feeling, you know, and I don't want to say, ha, we were right. Look at us. But you can't get around the fact that this proves that those of us who have a, a low cost operation and paid for equipment will still be running when everybody else is broke. Uh, go ahead. Well, and it, you know, it, it was born in the concept that business is difficult when, when there, when there is no crisis and that the only way to, um, well, the best way to lower the risk of you not succeeding in business is to, um, you know, control the, the, the cost. So it was, it was done for economic reasons. It was done for, uh, to maximize profit with minimal risk. It just so happens that it also works in a time of crisis like this, which the crisis is not economic, but it's having an economic, um, right. Byproduct, you know, so it's not that we benefit from it. We just don't, we're just not damaged by it. You know, it, it, right. we're, we're sort of immune to it because our margins are such and our cost is such and so far our opportunity has been not affected um but do you think i mean we've got hard data okay we we, we now have we just hired two drivers last weekend so we now have five trucks running and we've had some hiccups and some loads cancel but we're now right at a month into the alarm bells. You know, it was March 2nd, I believe, that 800 professors, PhDs, medical professionals sent a letter to Mike Pence and the uh, the task force and said, don't do this. Don't do what you're getting ready to do. So that was March 2nd. So it's 30 days. So the 2nd, the 13th, the 16th, and then the 31st are kind of the benchmark dates. And they've just continued to ratchet up the enforcement. But yet, our fundamental numbers have not changed. And I think people will say, oh, well, you know, well, look at the, uh, you know, well, look at the supply chain got wrecked. Well, yeah, it did. It's still difficult to find toilet paper. But that's a production issue. That's not a distribution issue. That's, hey, everybody, we cleaned out the supply, 
And now we've got to make an ass load of toilet paper, pardon the pun, uh, to, 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 to get that, the supply back up. But I don't, I don't think our trucks have been moving freight that is based on a supply or demand shift because of the panic. That's, that's why this question that I, I just, I'm not doing a good job articulating this. I don't think, but that's why this question keeps coming back to me of if you were able to survey every person, uh, well, how much of this non-essential stuff is really actually shut down? What is there just an illusion of it? And I see people, I think Kevin Rutherford was one of them. Freight waves has been screaming bloody murder. The, you know, the cliff, the freight cliff is coming. Is it? I mean, maybe it is, but we have to take into account like my customers. I don't, I don't haul freight. Everything I or I haul is special order, custom made, custom made cabinets, custom made windows, custom made doors. These customers, they, well, the cabinet place might build stock, you know, but I doubt it. But everything in the window and door, it's custom made. They they don't make they don't well here's a you know fifty three by forty two window, just because they they're all custom made. So those every single order on my trailer goes to a direct action of an individual customer. I got eleven stops this week. That's totally normal. Now. Uh, do we get two or three weeks down the road and all of a sudden it just disappears? That, that's the question that I have, and I can't reconcile that. Uh, you know, are we – I know we got a bunch of Landstar BCO sitting at the house because they're telling us in the Facebook, well, I ain't left in three weeks. I'm not going out there. Uh, so what are we going to learn a month from now? Are we just going to find out that freight volumes dipped 25% and at the same time, 25% of the trucks went home. So the rest of us just keep trucking along like normal. And then when the volumes come back up, everybody comes back up and, and it's just like it never happened, you know, or I guess B would be, we have the same thing. 25% drop, 25% people stay home. A bunch of people go out of business, cleans out. And then when it, when the economy comes back online, we go back to 2018 rates for a period of 90 to 180 days, or I guess C is uh, do the uh, do the despots and the tyrants not flip the switch back on, and then they say they try to gradually walk back to an open economy if they ever allow an open economy again. I just have all these questions because what I see and what I hear are two different things. And that's, that's what's so fascinating about living through this because you can't point to other periods in history where similar type things happen and have much in the way of, uh, firsthand experience, firsthand accounts, because nobody ever, ever lived in a time like this with all the technology and the communication and the social media and, um, this this has never existed and happened in an environment like this. So I'm just – I'm dying to – I want to push the fast-forward button because I'm dying to know the answers to these questions. You know, I just want to get this crap over with and move on to the next thing and see where we end up. But, you know, I, it's weird because I'm not – I'm not scared for the future. I'm not, I don't, I'm not worried about the Federal Reserve and the money supply and hyperinflation or, you know, a lot of these uh, apocalyptic type stuff because I know it always works out in the end. It always does. There's always innovation. There's always there's some, there's stuff going to come out of this that we'll not see coming from a mile away. I'm, a, I am worried about the short term and I'm concerned about violence, but I'm just not scared. And that's maybe that's the weirdest thing about the whole deal is everybody around me is freaking the hell out. And I'm like, not. And I don't, maybe that's the struggle. I just don't know what to do with that. You know, 
it's just weird. It's so strange. Well, <clears throat> I think if more people would quit being influenced by those who want them to be afraid and, uh, and, the, and, and are using fear to cause people to change in ways that they've never changed before for any other threat, that they would probably see what you see. But they don't, you know, they're only listen to what they watch on TV. And, you know, every night at five o'clock, we get another dose of, uh, you know, you know, the, the sky's falling. And then we got every governor in every state who's so afraid that he's going to be criticized for what he did or did not do in the big storm of 2020 that they're doing all completely unnecessary overreacting you know things so it's now, now it's a contest about who's not going to be who who's not going to be the one singled out when it's all over with and right now it's the governor in um, who didn't who hasn't closed the state yet texas maybe I, I don't know there's some state that hasn't ordered anybody to stay home you know uh, south dakota is one of them yeah it's, this is in the south though but anyway, um, so you know, it, it it's it just see why it's just CYA. That's all it is. Every everybody's afraid of what's going to be looked back on, and they're going to say, "Well, if you hadn't done this or you had done that," I mean, look at this, look at that. Um, <laughs> I live in Kentucky. We're the only state that hasn't had an uptick in gun purchases since this started. Okay. Well, you that's because all of us already had guns, okay? <laughs> but every other state has sold more guns, like up 30%, you know, except Kentucky. So, But anyway, uh, it, I think I'm like you. I, I don't really fear it. Um, you know, I don't, I'm not out here. I went to Walmart yesterday and bought groceries, and besides having to be ushered around the store, I didn't wear a mask. I didn't wear gloves. I didn't do anything I normally do except, you know, can't find shit, you know, that I normally buy. But, yeah. um, you know, it's not like it's not like business is, is usual. We we have had to, you know, you you, you got to have a little bit of brains and and seeing this coming. And we, you know, we had we had one truck that was full-time dedicated automotive. Okay, we were getting ready to put one of the new drivers on dedicated automotive. So we've had two trucks that we've had to completely change the freight profile on, you know, but it we did it. I mean, what, you know, we, we didn't send them home and go, oh, you know, my, my loads are canceled. We just found something else, you know. Um, we took three trucks to five trucks a week ago so now we're having about at, get 40% more loads than we had to get a week ago. And, you know, it hasn't really been all that difficult. You know, we've just had to be a little more careful about what we're loading and what it is and where it's going and making sure that the people are going to be there to receive it. So it's a little more due diligence. But, you know, everybody made a, 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 a normal check this week. You know, no, no one. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say that because I'm not bragging. But I'm just saying that we were, were able to continue business as normal in spite of the fact that, you know, the world is coming to a crash around us, you know. Um, I don't know. Maybe we're lucky. I, um, I did something today that I think I've never done. Larkin Rose put up this video. And in it, he said... I want you to go look at the executive order handed down by your governor, and it'll say, whereas, 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 by the power vested in me by the code, right? He said, go read it. Go read what the code says. So I did. I went to the website. Well, first I found the executive order. And it said that, whereas this and whereas that and whereas this and whereas that, I'm the governor and I declare and decree by the power vested in me by Chapter 15, Section 6, 
So I went and looked it up. And it's public safety and homeland security and all this stuff. And nowhere, nowhere in Chapter 15, Section 6, does it say the governor of West Virginia has the authority to close down a business? Nowhere in Chapter 15, Sections 1 or Section 6, that's the two that he cited, does the governor have the authority to lock me in my house? He just made it up. He just made it up out of thin air, okay? little, Just one little sidebar here. If you're interested in constitutional republics, go look at what the people that wrote that constitution thought about executive action. Okay. Because we've set, we set, that's what they do in the law. They set precedents and they say, oh, well, because we did this at that time, we'll do this now. And the, this, <clears throat> this precedent of executive action is unconstitutional. And has been, but we just let them do it. It, it started, I think they said that uh, Teddy Roosevelt was really the one that really took off on executive orders. And, uh, well, I don't have the constitutional authority in the, in, the, in the Congress. The Senate and the House didn't act like I wanted to, so I'm just going to get out my magic pen, and I'm going to write it down on paper, and so be it, saith the Lord. Uh, here's an executive order. And every president since then, when they don't have the, either the constitutional authority or the legislative action to go, they just write shit on paper and say, well, there it is. By the power vested in me, um, these people don't have this authority unless you give it to them. Where, where's the ACLU in all this? They're trying. I saw uh, they had they had filed some kind of suit against the governor of West Virginia last week, and of course the sheep in the comment sections, how dare they? ACLU sucks. I'm like, you idiots. Um, they have been making some noise, but good lord, there's so much noise now it's hard to break through. Um, but you know, I'll put some lark and roses in the in the show notes on YouTube and on the website. Um, but you know, go, go just, just go experience some different perspectives. The, the biggest problem that I've personally had, and it's applied to a lot of different things, but most especially during this, this time that we're in is if someone says, well, the government and the CDC said, a, and I'm like, okay, what about this? Shut up, slave. That's the response. It's it's not point, counterpoint, you know. Oh, I hear what you're saying, and I will consider what you have to say. No. Well, the CDC and the president said, and I'm like, okay, but what about what these other epidemiologists and, and PhDs and professors have to say? Shut up, slave. You shut up, slave. You get in your house. You lock the door. You put the blinds down. I don't want to hear from you again. Y'all, that's not uh, that's not discourse. That's not debate. That's slavery. When when your only response to someone who has a different perspective of a situation is to say, "Shut up, slave." I don't want to hear what you have to say. You don't have an argument at that point. I have I have gone and looked for other profession, health professionals to see what they have to say about this crisis. And there are other people out there who have just as many letters after their name as Dr. Fauci that say this is a gross exaggeration of the facts, that this is a power grab, that this is, is wrong what we're doing right now. But those voices are not allowed to speak on Fox News and CNN. You know, the only thing CNN seems to be concerned about right now is what did Trump know and when did he know it? And when are you going to get more viol of, of what do you call them? ventilators, Mr. President? I swear to God, they don't they could take Jim Acosta just out and just put up a cardboard stand up with a recorder. So that every time the press conference starts, they could just hit the button and Jim Acosta will ask the same stupid question in every single uh, interview or, or, or question that he asks. Anyway, sidebar. Um, well, one thing is, is, is 
is proven, you can convince the majority of people to completely walk away from every right that they have if you give them enough motivation. Yep. I mean, it's a phenomenal how much liberty has just been completely robbed from people in the past 30 days. That if 30 days ago, if you'd asked them if they would be willing to do all this, they'd have laughed at you and thought oh, yeah. you were a moron. I mean, yeah. can you imagine? No, you cannot go to a restaurant. Period. No, yeah. you cannot go to a park. No, you cannot go play golf. No, you cannot, 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 cannot. You cannot go paddleboard in the ocean by yourself. By yourself. Uh, Guy in Malibu was much arrested much go, this week. You, know, you cannot saying, go, to, go to church. Now, how, how many people would have, would have accepted that 30 days ago? You cannot <laughs> assemble. Yeah. You cannot uh, peacefully yeah. assemble. Or petition your government for a redress of grievances. Nope. Shut up, slaves. And and that dude, that paddleboarder. I mean, can we think about this for a second? Just one second. A guy gets on a paddleboard, goes into the ocean by himself, is arrested and put in a cage within six feet of other people. Well, he hello. Did. He was putting six feet of other people when they came and got him. You right. Know, he was by himself. <laughs> there's there's a there's somebody on Facebook that anyway. Um she lives down by the lake, Lake Cumberland down here. And she was just on ranting today because all these people were bringing their boats. And going out on Lake Cumberland, they should close that damn Lake Cumberland. You're, they're not. Those people aren't staying home. I'm thinking to myself, there's not two boats in that in that whole lake that are within 40, 40 yards of each other, much less six right. feet. You know, right. they just shouldn't. I mean, people have just completely bought into this, and they don't even realize it. You know, these are normally pretty sane, you know, God fearing people, and and now. Um, all the, I mean, you look on TV, which you can't help, but I mean, there's nothing else to do. And all these celebrities are talking about staying home, you know, without makeup on. Really? Thank you for your service. Give me a break. You know, I I just, you know, well, again, let's, I mean, think about the, the innovation that's going to come from this is going to be fantastic. Because if if you go back and you study any great government incursion on liberty, um, there's always innovation that comes out of it. Okay, we got the the, the person or persons that developed Bitcoin and blockchain did that in response to the government created financial crisis of two thousand eight. Um. When Edward Snowden came forward and let us all know about the horribly illegal and immoral spying programs that the NSA and the CIA were were doing, Apple and Google had to respond. And so now all of our iPhones and all of our Android devices devices have end-to-end encryption. So if I send Larry a text... The only two vi- two devices on this planet that can decipher those texts are these two iPhones. That's it. Apple can't even see them. And that's why you see oh, uh, last week, uh, I can't think of the name of Lindsey Graham, um, Congress member from South Carolina, uh, tries this every year. But they're, they're trying to make, force the... Um, technology companies to give them a back door into their systems mm-hmm. and they just fail over and over again because Lindsey Graham is so stupid and mentally incompetent that he doesn't understand what end to end encryption means. You can, I mean, Apple can give you back doors in all day long, but it gets encrypted. 
It's protected with cryptography. Lindsay, honey, you can't see it. It's none of your damn business. I don't care. You can call me a terrorist or, or whatever you want to do, but you you don't have permission to see what's inside my iPhone ever, period, end of story. It's none of your damn business. So there will be, I think, of course, I think this will accelerate um, cryptocurrency. I think it will accelerate use of blockchain. Um, once the smoke clears, and it's really, it's really difficult because I'm impatient. I want to see all this stuff now. I don't want to wait for it to be over, but you have to wait for it to be over. And once all the smoke clears and we find out who lied about what and when they lied about it and all the truth will eventually come out. It might take a year or two, but we'll eventually find out what was happening here. Um, and the market will respond and we will have new methods of privacy and technology available to us. <clears throat> But you still have a lot you can do. So we had a story that came out. It was actually my local weatherman, of all people, put out these screenshots where Google was tracking everybody's phones to see if they were properly socially distancing. Leave the damn thing at home. Yeah, or Go turn, get off the, turn off the location. location well, that, that doesn't help. Turn, turn off location service don't help. Just go get you a burner. A, a little prepaid cell phone. So if you need to have a, a connection with you and it doesn't have your name on it, it's a, it's what the burners are for. They're used by, by terrorists, drug dealers, <laughs> drug Criminals. dealers. Okay. Criminals. So just go get you a burner. I can't leave my phone at home cause I have to have it for picking loads and cannot contact the drivers and all that stuff. But like right now, if my family wanted to go on an off unauthorized outing, We'll just leave the phones at home. You can't track my van. You can't track my body yet. So we'll just leave the phones at home. We can fix that. But there will eventually be become an in there, innovation will come out of this that will protect us from this kind of tyranny. What we, what, you know, but God, I'm like, you can't fix stupid. You know, that's, Here, that's the hard a, part. Here's the thing to think about. Okay. Um, You know how it, a tactic, or even a negotiating tactic, to sometimes to get people to do what you want them to do, you 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 are looking for, say, step ten. But you know that's so outrageous it's never going to happen. So you settle for step four or five, and 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 that way you can you get them moving the direction you want to go. Here's what's scary. We've accepted step eight. That no one would have predicted 30 days ago we would we've accepted step four. Okay. Mm. So now that they know that we'll take this, just think about this. What if two other things were shut down? Trucking and banking. Yep. Trucking and banking. Because the only thing people have right now is they still can get supplies. They still can go to the fuel, get gas. They can still go to the grocery and get most groceries. And they can still go to the bank. Yep. What's to stop them? I, that's got to be the point. I mean, you would think when they said you can't go to church that that would have been enough. You, 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 you know, yeah, whatever. I, I don't want to go sit in a restaurant, but I can still go to the drive through Okay, whatever. But you'd think when they shut your church down, the New York City mayor even used permanently. If you gather, we'll shut your church down permanently. Okay, which, I mean, he's always been a communist, so that's no, that's no great shock. But there's obviously a line that people won't won't cross, you know. And if you sh well, if you literally, sh you know, there is a line. There but, is. <laughs> that it's a whole hell of a lot further down the road. Further, than I thought that's <laughs> my point. I was going to make. Yeah, there may but be. There is a line. I would have thought we'd already crossed it, but <laughs> well, and some yeah. people, some people haven't. I mean, 
there there are some people that aren't accepting this and and that that to them the line has that hasn't been drawn yet but forced compliance well what they've already ordered would be a line but i'm telling you right now if there's no gasoline and there's no groceries and there's no access to money well we in kentucky we already got our guns the rest of you better, you have to go get them but yeah. Um, then the then there'll be a fight for ammo. All these people that hoarded gold and silver. My recommend is you go sell it and buy ammo. Yeah. Well, what the the answer that we really don't have, and this kind of goes back to the original point that I was trying to I was trying to make. If you go look up the ratings and try to determine the viewership for all the news networks, which are obviously probably higher right now, given the circumstances. But I was shocked that like Sean Hannity is still kind of the king of that time slot with like four or five million viewers. And I was like, really? I mean, that's a, that's a tiny number of people in a country of 350 million, you know? Uh, so if you add them all up together and, and you give them a bump for the current circumstances, you'd have to, you'd have to assume a mathematical equation somewhere around maybe 20 million people that are actually watching the news and receiving that information. I mean, we know in presidential elections, you generally get about a hundred million of 350 million actually going to the voting booth. So in that scenario, you've got 250 million people don't even participate in the election process, which includes children, of course. But the ultimate question is how many people are there actually locked in their houses right now and and actually completely bought into this fear and you don't need many of them because you you know you get Karen on Facebook that uh, um, you know is it that will report you you know because she's looking out the window and trying to you know see if anybody's not complying and she'll call the cops you know hey these people are they're not living in fear they must you know they must comply so you get the snitches. Uh, that I've even seen among my own people, a woman that's a uh, like a teacher at a cosmetology school. She's like, well, if I find out you're working in your house, I'm going to report you. And I was like, wow, we, we went from America 2020 to 1930s Germany in like two weeks. And she's like, you didn't have to call me a Nazi. And I'm like, if it walks like a Nazi and quacks like a Nazi, probably a Nazi. Um, you know, and, and people afterwards, they look back on the Holocaust and they go, how did people ever do that? Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> I think we see fear works really, really well. well you know, because that's and, and, what and, and 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 the willingness to give up liberty for perceived security. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and liberties that you may not ever get back. Yeah, dude. When I heard the president of the United States say, "Well, we may, we may never shake hands again." Like, have you lost your mind? Um, but it's, hey, listen, it's done a great job of turning neighbor against neighbor. You know, you, you've instantly made an entire population scared of each other. Uh, you know, we've been down that road once before. It's called the civil war and it didn't, it didn't end well. A lot more people died in the civil war than this virus could ever kill, you know? If you just walked up and licked every doorknob and kissed every stranger you saw, you couldn't kill as many people with this virus as you would with a civil war. If we got as, as upset about, about other things that kill more people than this virus will ever kill, I mean, that's what I don't understand. Why this one? It, it, is, it, is, it, is it? I mean, the chances of you getting it, okay, and even if you get it, the chances of you living through it, Make not this thing not even close to mm-hmm. what it, to how many people die in car wrecks every day. 
Okay. But yet, you know, we haven't taken this, this extreme approach about any other thing that can kill you. Okay. Mm. Only this thing, you know, I'm just going to say this for the record so that it is logged at 1435 on Sunday, April 5th. I loathe Donald Trump, but I swear to God, if you sons of bitches in the media have done this just so you can try to get rid of him, I swear to God, there's hell to pay. Because here's the newsflash for you. Write it down. So saith me on this day. He's going to get reelected. Because you have you have put up you have offered up to the people a geriatric communist and a pedophile with Alzheimer's. So it's not going to happen. So can I just make a plea to the media and the political elites and the central planners? If you're doing all this just to get rid of Donald Trump, can we just stop? Because it's not going to happen. I'm not going to go vote for him. I'm not going to vote for anybody. I don't vote. But it's not going to happen. You're going to get four more years. So if – it's a big if, okay? But if you're in the media and if your, your aim is to terrorize all of us and, and, and destroy all of our liberty just so you can get rid of, you know, orange man bad, what are you going to do when he gets reelected? God help us if you'll go this far. And maybe it's not the case. I don't know. But the statistical evidence does not back this up. You can go look at the numbers yourself. We've got 200 cases, 300 cases in West Virginia. And, I, and I'm learning that when you test for coronavirus, it's not specific to the strain. Everybody on earth has had coronavirus. It's called a common cold. That, that's what, Go look at your can of Lysol. It says coronavirus on it because that's what it is. Is there a strain right now that has a really bad respiratory component to it that's harming people with, with, with comorbidities? Yes, sure is. Which probably wouldn't have ever happened had those morons in China quit eating bats and wild game and shit. Right. But it, but even that doesn't even matter right now. I, I, I At this point, I don't even care where it came from, you know? Right. I do, now, I do find it hysterical that U.S. intelligence, uh, you know, are, are, are spreading this stuff. That, well, China's lying about their numbers, you know? Okay, so what if they are? So what you're telling me, just so I'm clear, is the U.S. government and the governors of the states are acting like communists right now. So we need to blame the communists in China. Right. Okay. All right. I mean, because when I saw that story going to start going around a few days ago, well, U.S. intelligence reports that China's landing. I'm like, okay, let's just U.S. intelligence. They lied to us about World War II. They lied to us about Korea. They lied to us about Vietnam. They lied to us about Kuwait. They lied to us about Iraq. They lied to us about Iran. They lied to us about Iraq. That's the unfortunate thing, and Tom Woods pointed this out the other day. In the story of the boy that cried wolf, there eventually really was a wolf. So... What we're faced with now is if this virus is as virulent and as deadly as they say it is, I'll tell you who's to blame. It's the people that have spent the last 50 years lying to us. And then those of us that are like, well, hell, you've lied to me about everything else. Why do I have to believe you now? Um, that means y'all are to blame because y'all are the lying sons of bitches that have lied about anything and everything for the last 50 or 60 years. Oh, but now you're telling the truth. Sure. Uh, you know, it, again, it, it's still she, she, the one thing that the founders of America did right was they unleashed liberty on this, on this earth. And through every effort over 200 and some years now that 
the, the, the power hungry psychopaths have tried to destroy the market. They just can't do it. The market moves too fast and it's moving now. And because there's people like us, there's people like me and you, and there's people that are listening to this podcast and many other podcasts like it. And we're not willing to give up our Liberty for the exchange in, in exchange for an illusion of security. And it'll be because of us, the renegades and the rebels that continue to operate that you will, you can thank us for our service down the road because tyranny can never win in an open market. And that's why I think that's why they're trying like hell to just destroy the market and then they can win. But I mean, guys, we've been down this road before we've, we've had a few world wars. We've had a bunch of conflicts we've had. It doesn't work. So, you know, I wish y'all would quit and just leave us the hell alone to live in peace uh, because all this stuff you're doing is not going to work. So give it up. Just stop. It's really simple. You know, you could even walk up and say, all right, listen, all right, stop. We, sorry, we made it all up. Y'all go back to work. Every, everything's fine. Well, there is a line. And yeah. people will finally reach that line, or at least some will. And, there's, yeah. and, and look, how many people actually are leaders and how many people are actually are followers, personality-wise? So it, it, right. it, 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 just, it only takes certain select people, and then you start choosing sides, you know. Right. So it, it doesn't have to be a mass thing. It just has to be people of influence and finally go, look, this, you know. Here's yeah. what's really, you know, and, and then, and nowadays, especially with, so we've, we've, we've never had social media before in a situation like this, you know, so it's not like we can't, um, get the word out, you know, and, and people already have aligned themselves with certain sources on social right. media. So it's, it, you know, it's, it will happen fast. Um, I was noticing just, on my face. Facebook memories that six years ago this weekend, we were at a homeschool convention in Cincinnati and Dr. Ron Paul was one of the speakers. And so he's speaking in this big, huge room is probably, I don't know, 2000 homeschoolers. And he said this to us, it does not take a majority. It takes a very vocal minority. You know, so he was basically telling us as homeschoolers, you don't have to go out and try to take over the world. OK, you, you don't need to you don't have to be occupied with becoming a 51 percent majority in, in, in to either protect liberty or not change. You just need to have a you need to be a very vocal minority because tyranny always begins with the oppression of unpopular minorities. So, uh, you know, you're and, and now that I have been, I have, I have been an, an unpopular minority in a few areas, you know, as a homeschooler, as a truck operator, um, I have, I have experienced what it's like when the gang comes and the bullies come and try to try to take your freedom away from you because you don't fit their program. You don't fit their model. You're not doing what you're told. And so I've lived it. So it's, it's scary short term. There's a, there's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of nervousness right now. Uh, but I'm still hopeful for, hopeful for the future. We're going to keep producing this content and we're going to keep, cause I'm not going to be silent. That ain't happening. You're going to have to kill me to shut me up, you know? So, there's a there's a lot of hope um, still yet, even in a time as crazy as this. But you just can't let them you can't let them take over your mind. That's that's the big thing. You know, uh, they may shut your restaurant down, not let you go to church, you know, but they can't have your mind. That's yours. Nobody can ever have that. So you got anything else to add in closing? No, nope, we're good. We're going to just kind of keep everything going for another week and we'll see well you know next week and how this week goes but um you know knock on wood so far so good so um no i'm good all right y'all send us an email 
Chris at Blue Ribbon Logistics.com, Larry at Blue Ribbon Logistics.com. Check us out on YouTube at Blue Ribbon Logistics. And uh, give us a like and a subscribe there. Share the content if you would. That would be helpful. Let other people know about the show if you if you found uh, it, it engaging or entertaining or educational. Let others know about it. Uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, we're all over there. And until next time, everybody be safe, and we'll see you later.